Welcome back to Cobb's Corner. I'm your host, Morgan Cobbs. If this is your first time listening to this podcast, then welcome. And if you're a returning listener, welcome back. In today's episode of Cobb's Corner, we are going to be closing out our Change Your Life series with the 2013 indie film The Way, Way Back. Shy 14-year-old Duncan goes on summer vacation with his mother, her overbearing boyfriend, and her boyfriend's daughter. Having a rough time fitting in, Duncan finds an unexpected friend in Owen, manager of the Water Wiz Water Park. Uh, Duncan, played by Liam James, is not a popular kid, and it doesn't look like the summer is going to offer anything better for him. His mother's boyfriend has invited them to his beach house, where Duncan is expected to improve his personality and physical appearance and meet girls. But his would-be stepsister doesn't want anything to do with him, and his shy demeanor makes it difficult for him to meet anybody new. When Duncan wanders into the Water Wiz, the local water park, he meets adult employees who are just having fun. Owen, played by Sam Rockwell, lets Duncan work with him, and their newfound bond will help each other mature and find their place in life. Which for Duncan means standing up to his would-be stepfather, having a conversation with the girl next door, and being more comfortable with who he is. That storyline is provided to us by Napier's Logs on IMDb. The movie is directed by Nat Faxon and Jim Rash, well written and directed by Nat Faxon and Jim Rash, and stars Steve Carell, Tony Collette, Allison Janney, and the aforementioned Sam Rockwell. Oh, Sam Rockwell and Maya Rudolph. Um, let's go to Cops Corner. So I'll admit, this movie is sort of a comedy drama, also a bit of a coming-of-age tale, uh, so there's lots of laughs and there's also some like really serious uh, parts, so I'm just going to quickly go through like some of my favorite parts of the movie. Uh, one of my favorite parts is when Duncan goes to the Water Wiz water park and Owen comes up to him and says... I'm afraid I'm gonna have I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. Uh, you've been having way too much fun, you know, and you're starting to kind of bum everybody. <laughs> you're starting to kind of, you know, we're, we're start we're starting to get get complaints and like you're having way too much fun. Cause cause Duncan, you know, as I mentioned in the intro, he's kind of like a shy, more introverted, you know, 14 year old kid who you know is a bit socially awkward and you know doesn't really know how to talk to or relate to people. He's kind of uptight. So, you know, he meets Owen, who's kind of the antithesis of of him. You know, Owen's more easygoing, but we realize that he's also a bit of a deadbeat who, despite everything, has never lost his positive outlook on life. And, you know, through humor, like, he's able to kind of sort of get Duncan to open up. So there's that moment, and then there's, <laughs> there's, there's another time where we meet uh, Duncan, or excuse me, Owen's uh, three, I think he's got three, I guess, illegitimate sons, one of which I think is played by the the same, the same, the same guy who played uh, Rowley in uh, Di Diary of a Wimpy Kid. You know, he, he's, he's in this movie, and I don't want to get his name wrong, so... The guy, the guy who played Rowley in Diary, in Diary of Wimpy Kid, he shows up in this film as one of Owen's sons. There's a funny scene where they mention how they, they mention how um, apparently years ago there were two kids that went down the, that went down the water slide, and one of them passed the other, and if one of one of them passed the other kid, and no one really knows how, uh, you know. So then. Owen's three kids, you know, they all try to go down, down the slide at the same time. Oh, and at, at this point, Duncan is now working there. You know, we, we see how Duncan really just sort of 
leaves during the during the day, you know, while his mother, her boyfriend, and they're all having fun, you know, as you know, grown ups, and then he just disappears all day. You know, he's been going to the water whiz secretly, and then they hire him. He starts working there, and then he's work he, he's he's working the slide one day, and these three kids just like rush him, and they all go down the tube at the same time, and then they all get stuck. <laughs> So then Owen says. So then Duncan calls calls Owen up, and he and he even suggests like, why don't we like turn off the water, then look at the footing, and then Owen's like, uh, that'll be a that'll officially be Plan B. Owen goes over to the uh, kids, the kids in the line, and says, uh, "Hey, uh, I I need a hero. I'm holding out for a hero. He's got to be fast. He's got to be fresh from the fight, and he's got to be larger than life." No one. Kevin Bacon, foot loose. No, okay. Personally, I I think I think that movie that song has been in like every movie recently. That song was in what Super Mario Bros. I feel like it was in Dungeons and Dragons. Like that movie's been really that song's been really overused in a lot of movies recently. I personally remember that song from Shrek Two. All right, shout out to the two thousands kids. So he gets this one. He gets one kid to um, you know, get these three kids. <laughs> out of the tube you know finally owen mentions like okay look we got three kids got three got three knuckleheads that decided to go down the tube at the same time and they got stuck so i need somebody who's big enough to kind of get them unstuck this kid malcolm volunteers and they all go down the tube but we also see how owen is really just sort of an adult child you know he's kind of just having fun and he's not really taking his job seriously so then Maya Rudolph's character uh Caitlin Caitlin played by Maya Rudolph who is I guess a crush of Owens who it's it, it's unclear whether or not they ever dated but you know she's apparently a close friend slash crush of his and she mentions how like you don't take your job seriously. I wish this were more than just a job for me, but really this is just a job at, at this point. I wish that you would take things seriously. I wish that we could actually be together. This, you see, that this this is why we're not together, is because you've been so negligent. So, a bit of a wake-up call for Owen. Uh, there's that part. There's another part where, uh, after they first hired Duncan, where there's a group of kids who I guess stole some cardboard from like one of the shacks and then just put the cardboard down and then pulled out like a boom box and then they, they just started <laughs> everybody just like start they just formed a circle and then just kids just started like break dancing on the uh, on, on, on the cardboard and uh, <laughs> it's a fun scene where you know because Duncan is like officially staff he Owen sends him over to take to take the kids cardboard and turn off the music and he tries to take the cardboard, but then <laughs> one of the kids is like, you can have our cardboard once you show us your moves. And there's like a whole scene where like they literally force Duncan to dance in front of this group of kids. And like they even give him like a dance lesson. And yeah, then they let him, they let him take the cardboard. And as he's taking it, as he's picking it up, he kind of falls down. They give him the nickname Pop and Lock. So that's like his, his nickname uh, there now. You know, he's now known as Poppet Lock at Water Whiz. And yeah, we, we start to see Duncan come out of his shell in, in, in this movie. And we start to see him come out of his shell. And there's a scene where he actually finds out that his mother's boyfriend, um, Trent, played by Steve Carell, who. I'll admit, you know, Steve Carell, he's a great, he's a great actor. He's actually, this is the second film in this series that he's been in. He was in our last movie, Crazy Stupid Love. He's a really funny guy, but it really, I guess, showed the range that Steve Carell had with this role because the the role that he has in this movie, he plays like a legitimate asshole. Um, you know, you know, for 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 lack for lack of a better phrase, just gonna keep 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 it a thousand and. Yeah, you know, so 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 Trent he is having an affair with his his friend uh, Joan, Joan played by Amanda Amanda Pete, 
Uh, Kip, Kip and Joan, Kip played by Rob Cordy. You know, Kip and Joan are close friends of Trent, and so while they're in, I guess, Long Island or at whatever wherever this some this the summer summer places, while they're there, Trent, I guess, I guess is, ha is ha secretly having an affair with Joan, and. And Pam, uh, Duncan, Duncan's mother, Pam, played by Tony Collette, she suspects that Trent is being unfaithful. She confronts him on it. Uh, he denies it. But then there's one night where they're all having dinner, and Joan takes Trent onto the dance floor. And then Duncan pretty much has, like, not a meltdown, but he pretty much just finally speaks up and says, you know, like, Trent's been cheating on you with Joan, like, are you gonna do anything about it? It's like, of course not, you don't, you know, of course not, you don't do anything, you just let, you just let stuff like this slide, you know, I'm so over this, I'm over this vacation, I'm over you, I want to go with dad, you know, he keeps mentioning his dad, and, and then Trent, <laughs> all right, you know, at, at, th at this part, like, I really just wanted to put myself in the movie and just, like, slap Trent, and me insert myself into the movie and like jump Trent because he told Duncan it's like your dad doesn't want you so huge huge you know dick move um you know but so yeah you know Duncan he finds refuge in Water Wiz he finds refuge in going and although he's the only None of the employees are his age, you know, he's the only, like, teenager. He, he, he's the only teenager working at this water park. Everybody else there is, like, you know, maybe we'll say, like, mid-twenties. Is like, you know, I guess the young, the next older uh, de demographic there of, of, of employees. So he's finding solace in being able to go to this water park and just be himself. And he just hates being at home with his family and his mother's overbearing boyfriend, his potential future stepfather, you know. So really this is a story of you know, Duncan sort of going his own way, and even there's a scene where Owen says how sa says how Trent, what Trent told you, you know, Trent telling you that your father doesn't want you, you see, that had nothing to do with you, that's got everything to do with him, and that's on him, that's not, it's not your fault, it's got nothing to do with you, and you can't buy into you can't buy into that bullshit. You gotta, you gotta go your own way, and you gotta, you know, find yourself and find your own happiness, and not be so, you know, cautious about like what other people think, and you know, be able to find your own happiness. So we see how Owen begins to realize that he has the capacity to impart whatever wisdom that he's learned in life, things that he's gone through in life, and to improve the life of Duncan and to teach Duncan, you know, well, stop Duncan from like making the same mistakes that he might have made in the past. And so yeah, you know, Owen taking that mentor uh, role and uh, gosh that got serious um, <laughs> I guess you know being that again like I said it's a comedy drama like one of the more comedic scenes was when Lewis who was played by uh, Jim Rash he's kind of the Not comic relief, but you know, he he's he's kind of like a background character who I guess hates his job and like wants to be a storm chaser. They have a farewell party for Lewis one night, 
and it's funny I think actually Duncan the the night that he hears I think the same night of that party that they had that he pretty much ruined by complaining that Trent was you know having and having an affair with Joan later that night he hears he hears uh he hears uh, Trent and his mom arguing, and then he sneaks out. He sneaks over to this party at Waterwiz, the farewell party that they're having for Lewis, and <laughs> it's a party that ends in like a water gun fight. It's a really, really fun scene. All right, there's a dance sequence. I feel like every Sam Rockwell movie. It wouldn't be a movie with Sam Rockwell if Sam Rockwell did not at least bust a move. <laughs> okay, I mean. I know early, early um, days of this podcast, I, well, I mean, you know, my podcast isn't that old, but I know if you go back and listen to, I think it's my third episode, I reviewed Iron Man 2, which starred Sam Rockwell, and so yeah, he, you know, busts a move in that movie, he, you know, busts a move in this movie as well, and he's really just an overall funny guy. Uh, but but I, I do think that's like a staple of Sam Rockwell movies. He usually busts a move. And so he, I guess, Owen and Caitlin get together. And and um, Duncan finally talks to Susanna, who is uh, the, the, girl, the girl next door. The girl next door, uh, Susanna, played by Anna Sophie Robb. She finally sees him at Water Wiz and says, "Like, oh, so this is where you disappear off to all the time." And you know, he finally he finally starts talk to, starts talking to her, and and you know they become close, they become friends, and he tells her how like, oh, it was built in 1982, and the owner didn't want to change it at all. You know, <laughs> it's like didn't even want to get it up to code or anything and yep and if any change were to be made about it we have an atomic bomb on deck in case anybody changes anything about this park <laughs> so so yeah uh so yeah by, by the end of the movie you know uh pam Dun duncan's mom she just she decides to leave early yep she she decides to leave leave this uh this town early you know, I guess they were supposed to stay for the whole summer she decides to leave and as as they're leaving I think Duncan and Susanna share a kiss as they're at the gas station Duncan's sitting in the back of the car he runs out and runs over to Waterwiz to say goodbye to Owen and the two of them end up going down one of the tubes all right Owen first, then Duncan, and then as they're coming out of the tube, you see that Duncan is in front of Owen. Yep, Duncan's in Duncan's in front of Owen, or vice versa. Um, <laughs> point is, one of them you know passed the other. I, th I think I think it was Duncan that pa that passed Owen, and. He never, you know, I think the last, his, his last words before going down the tube were, don't die wondering. You know, it's like, if you want to find something out, you know, don't die, don't die wondering. You know, let's go test it out. Let's go find out. And Duncan ends up not telling anyone how he did it. You know, no one knows how he did it. <laughs> like, as, 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 as Owen said earlier in the movie, no one knows, no one knows uh, how it happened other than, other than the two kids that were in the that were in the tube, and of course, and of course Jesus Christ, but he's a little hard to get a hold of. <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, Owen introduces himself to Pam. He says, "You know, you got a great kid here." And Owen even like, you know, meanwhile Trent is just complaining. It's like, you know, what is? It's like, what is this? Like, we need to be, we need to get back on the road, and you know, Owen, and then yeah, Trent. Yeah, yeah, Trent, Trent just keeps complaining, and then Owen finally, like, kind of confront confronts Trent. It's like, you know, hey, Trent, I'm Owen. I'm a good friend of the three, and he kind of like protects Duncan 
from Trent. So, the movie ends the exact same way it started, with the family driving in the driving in the car, driving in I think it's a station wagon, and you know Duncan sitting in the back, sitting in the back facing, face facing facing backwards. He's not facing forward. He's facing the back, and his mom, who's who's in the passenger seat. She crawls to the back and sits next to her son. And that's how the movie ends. So as I said before, this movie is a nice coming of age tale. You know, it's it's a movie about growing up and stepping out of your shell and being able to put yourself out there and just being able to put yourself out there and improve your life, improve your current you know, state of existence and learning how to have fun and not take life so seriously. Uh, I know that that was like a laundry list of like themes, but but but, but yeah, I guess th those are those are like the main like themes, the main takeaways that you know there may be challenges that you experience in life, but do not allow your circumstance to stop you from being who you are. Don't let that circumstance, good or bad, stop you from achieving all that you can in life. And also, never let any past bad experiences and past negative experiences that you've had, some th things that you've done, don't let that disqualify you from your ability to do good, from your ability to improve the lives of those around you, from your ability to be a mentor, all right? I, I notice, you know, as I've gone through and watched these movies and you know, I've rewatched some of them, I've been rewatched, some of them I've rewatched and I, I had watched before, before doing this series and other movies like The Way Way Back I was watching for the very first time. And I've seen some overlap in the themes and takeaways. I think this movie, it's kind of poetic that we ended the series with The Way Way Back because the first movie that we did in this series was Groundhog Day and I think there's similar themes in Groundhog Day and in The Way Way Back and that is acts of service so you know I mean go listen to my Groundhog Day review but specifically with The Way Way Back Owen realizes that he has the ability to be a mentor and to be a guide for Duncan. You know, he sees Duncan as this kind of sad, introverted uh, kid who, who, might, who might need some words of encouragement, who might need some words of motivation. So, Owen, you know, even though he is not perfect and he doesn't maybe have you know, in some scenes it seems like he doesn't even really like himself. He doesn't really take things too seriously. He still recognizes that he has the ability to do good in the life of Duncan and to improve the life of Duncan and to be a good person, to be that change that he wants to see in the world. And I know that sounds super cliche. <laughs> You know, got me out here quoting Gandhi, but um, but yeah, you know the um, the ability to do good, the ability to be a good person, the ability to positively impact the lives around us, the ability to change 
your life, to change your mind. I mean, literally the name of this series, you know, change your life. We all have this ability. So I highly urge that you guys check this movie out. Um, later on in the episode, I'm going to say where, where you can find it. Uh, check this movie out. Maybe watch it a few times so you can like really catch everything. But main theme is we all have the ability to change. We all have the ability to do good. On to the Way Way Back Plus. So this last segment I have called the Way Way Back Plus. Um, before I continue, uh, I, I did sort of rename a few of the segments. You know, as I've continued this podcast, I have sort of changed around like the formats of the format of these episodes. Um, I don't know if I've gone on the record saying this or not, but it's a work in progress. You know, this podcast is a work in progress. I'm a work in progress. Hence this you know change, change your life series but um but and anyway the, the the new the new segments are going to be like there'll be an introduction like before i'll go through my favorite parts we'll have themes and analysis and then we'll have like the movie title plus so right now we're in the way way back plus and this is where i'll go through all of the awards all the trivia you know all that stuff you know the way way back plus Without any further ado, let's get on with it. So, the way way back, it won five awards and 30 nominations. It won a Critics' Choice Award. Uh, well, in 2014, uh, Liam James, the actor of the actor of Duncan, he was nominated for a Critics' Choice Award in 2014 for Best Young Actor slash Actress. And this movie was nominated, in 2014, was nominated for the Critics' Choice Award for Best Comedy. Uh, Sam Rockwell was nominated for Best Actor in a Comedy at the Critics' Choice Awards 2014. The Clotrudis Awards. Now, I had never heard of these awards. As I mentioned earlier, this movie is an independent film. It's an indie film. It's from Fox Searchlight Pictures. Fox Searchlight, which I think is a smaller studio within 20th Century Fox, is a smaller studio that they have like for their independent features that are maybe filmed outside of like mainstream uh, Hollywood. You know this. Uh, yeah, Fo Fox Searchlight Pictures, and I know Focus Features is run by. Either Universal or DreamWorks. I'm not entirely sure. I want to say I want to say it's Universal has like fo focus features, and they're the smaller studio for their more independent films. So Clotrudis Awards are award that that's an award ceremony for for independent movies that have had less than a th that were released in in less than a thousand. Uh, movie theaters worldwide within their first four weeks so that's like the scale of films that end up qualifying to even be in the running for the Clotrudis Awards so at the 2014 Clotrudis Awards Allison Janney was nominated for Best Supporting Actress Sam Rockwell was nominated for Best Supporting Actor uh, the, and this movie was nominated for Best Performance by an Ensemble Cast. That's the 2014 Claude Trudis Awards. MTV Movie and TV Awards. Liam James was nominated for Breakthrough Performance. And that's all the awards that I will actually go through. All of these awards, all the, all the awards, all the awards and nominations 
are available on IMDb, which is you know where I get all this stuff from. On some trivia, in an interview, writer-director Jim Rash said the script's main inspiration was the opening scene inspired by a similar conversation he had with his own stepfather when he was 14. So again, life inspires art. I think I remember in my Fight Club review I said how David Fincher, or no, not David Fincher, but the author of the book, uh, Chuck Palahniuk, Pal Pal Palahniuk or something, said that the movie Fight Club was based on, was kind of inspired by his encounter that he had at work that day. Um, so yeah, life inspires art. Yeah, it's a similar conversation he had with his own stepfather when he was 14. I mean, yeah, I, I definitely think that uh, respect is important in any relationship. Um, <laughs> So, in order to save money, the filmmakers decided not to get trailers for the actors and instead decided to rent a house for the duration of filming, approximately six weeks, where the actors could go between takes. The house turned into a popular hangout spot for the cast and crew, and they would often go to the house even during weekends or days off. Okay, well, it's, you know, I mean, it is cost effective, but I think having a house, having a having a shared space where you can kind of get to know your co-stars and everybody gets to kind of hang out together and actually like renting a house for six weeks i would actually take that over over having like a separate trailer i think just adding that adding to that family aspect of you know we're all making this movie together yeah. i would have taken the house over the trailers any day but if it was Fox Searchlight Pictures or 20th Century Fox. Yeah. Sam Rockwell would often improvise and joke around on the loudspeaker during scenes. One time, forgetting that there were children around, he made an inappropriate joke about herpes, which upset the owner of the park. Rockwell had to go and apologize so that they could continue filming. <laughs> you know, that is definitely um, something that Sam Rockwell would do. Um, you know, Mr. Rockwell, I can't wait to interview you one day. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> had to go go and apologize. Shoot, I mean, <laughs> you got to know your audience, folks. Got to know know your audience. You know, know when there are children present. So, so yeah, know your audience, folks. That's the main takeaway from that. While location scouting, Jim Rash would take pictures of beach houses that he felt would be good to film in. During filming, he discovered that one of the houses he photographed belonged to Steve Carell's in-laws. It's a small world, after all. It's a small world, after all. I mean, what are the odds, you know? Beach house that belongs to Steve Carell's in-laws, and it's a movie with Steve Carell. Wow. I mean, I know. Uh, I know. I know. I know. Celebrities tend to have like multiple houses and stuff. But <laughs> truly, is a small world, guys. The script was written in 2007 as "The Way Back," but the title was later changed to avoid confusion with the film "The Way Back" in 2010. The title refers to the way back seat, the 1970s colloquial expression for the third, often hidden seat located in the cargo section of a station wagon. Oh, okay, so, so now the title makes sense. The way, way back. Now, you see, I'm, I'm glad they explained that because, you know, generation gap, I've never been in a station wagon, but growing up, I've primarily driven in, in minivans, and I remember um, my mom had a Hyundai Entourage, and it has, and it's a car with three rows. Like there's the front seat, and then there's the middle, and then the back. Uh, just like in in the Toyota Sienna, Toyota, Toyota Sienna that she drives now, it's a front, middle, back. But yeah, that that title, the way way back, it actually now now makes sense because that's where 
Duncan was writing. Like, he was writing in the way, way back, I think, in the beginning and at the end. Alright, so yeah, that's a nice, nice, nice little way of, uh, you know, the title and... Okay. Nice little uh, way of paying homage, I guess. Oh, and then also the title referring to The Way Back Seat. Right, which was, I guess, a 1970s colloquial expression for the third often hidden seat located in the cargo section of a station wagon. If there are any uh, Gen Xers or baby boomers that can confirm that saying, you know, the way back seat, if that was a thing that was said back then, you know, any 70s kids, any 60s or 70s kids um, who are listening to Cobb's Corner, feel free to confirm or deny in the comments below. On to some goofs. Continuity. When Owen and Roddy are joking, jokingly giving Duncan a hard time for flirting with Susanna, a girl wearing a purple bikini walks past them three times, going in the same direction each time. Hmm. Well, it was probably, again, you know, the, the, the same people, you know, the same extras, you know, between takes. You know, they probably, probably had to do multiple takes. But it's interesting that they, that, that they noticed that. I mean, the, the people, you know, IMDb is amazing. Um, but like the, the the fact that you guys, you know, shout out to any of my listeners who are contributors for IMDb because I did not notice that, and you know, thank you IMDb because now I have to go watch the movie again, just for that specific scene. <laughs> but um, but 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 yeah, I think uh, it's great that they noticed that, and you know that that tends to show up in a lot a lot of movies. You know, lapses in continuity. You know. In the first scene at the water park, Owen is eating a Pop-Tart. Throughout the scene, the amount of Pop-Tart eaten and the direction it is facing in his hand changes several times. Again, probably improvisation from the actor between takes. Maybe they forget the exact blocking of the scene. Yeah. So yeah, you know, it's fun things to notice in movies. On to some factual errors. When Owen talks about entering Duncan's name on the leaderboard, Duncan mentions you can only enter three letters of a name per score. In reality, Pac-Man doesn't let you enter a name on the leaderboard, only saying the high score with no leaderboard either. Oh, okay. So, I, I see. So, now, again, generation gap. Uh, I... Might have played Pac-Man once or twice at an arcade. I wasn't the biggest. I feel like arcades, not really a thing for us Zoomers. It's like I'm old enough to remember going to the arcade a few times as a kid, but it wasn't like a staple of my childhood. So, I mean, seeing just high score and no like name or anything, you know that that. Uh, doesn't sound too far from the truth, because I feel like the same thing happens on, like, even, you go to arcade games, you go to Dave & Buster's, you go to Game Zone. A lot of those games probably don't let you put your name in, they just have a high score. Yeah. That's what it is. Duncan gets a job at 14 with no parent signing off on his employment, further seeing he isn't even paid, quote-unquote, under the table when he receives a paycheck. Hmm. So that's a huge like it's a movie moment. You know, he's not he's not even paid under the table. He's just kind of paid. I did notice they just gave him his paycheck like he wasn't like paid under the table or nothing. Cuz I know like some some family businesses and I guess this is completely legal. It's like if maybe you know father owns a restaurant and he might let his son kind of be like I don't know like the busboy or like do some or pit or pit, pitch in pitch in around the restaurant, and he might give him like a few dollars under the table. That's completely legal. You just can't have him on your payroll. Because I don't know about other states, but I know here in Connecticut, the legal age to work is 16. If I'm not mistaken, like you can have a job at 16. So 
being that he was 14 and, you know, stayed in New York, I'm overanalyzing this. <laughs> Incorrectly regarded as goofs. Near the end, when they stop to fuel up, many think that because the pump handle is green, that it is diesel being put into the station wagon, while many diesel pumps do have green handles, that doesn't mean all green handles are diesel. The pump he is at has octane ratings and a sign stating that it may contain 10% ethanol, proving that it is just gasoline. Okay, well, eagle-eyed viewers, you know, <laughs> nice, ni ni nice, nice that you guys caught that. When Susanna, Anna Sophia Robb, closes the tailgate to the station wagon after Duncan, Liam James, climbs in, she lifts up from the bottom to close the tailgate. A few minutes later, when Duncan jumps out at the gas station, the door opens. Uh, size, uh, a few minutes later, when Duncan jumps out at the gas station, the door opens sideways like a passenger side door of a car. A feature of this model station wagon was the dual acting flip slash swing tail light swing swing tailgate where it could be opened like a car door or like the tailgate of a pickup truck oh okay that's actually in a, a pretty pretty versatile uh mechanism could open up sideways or up and down hmm. what if we could do that with doors probably not All right, revealing mistakes. The father character questions Duncan on whether he knows how a dent occurred on the roof of the car. Duncan was shown leaping off of the vinyl covered roof and no damage was evident. I think I did notice that as well. Yeah, he, get, he gets off the car and then there's no real dent shown or anything. So. Crew or equipment visible. There's a microphone visible inside Owen's shirt when he and Duncan are on top of the slide. Oh. oh okay. So um, again, e eagle-eyed viewers, because I don't, I don't think I caught that. I, I actually don't think I caught that. Some quotes. Owen, you disappoint me, kid. You're late. You're planning on making a habit of this? Duncan. What? Owen. You're fired. Duncan. But I just... Owen. Sticks out his hand. You make a valid point. Welcome back. With benefits. <laughs> uh, Owen. In mock seriousness. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Duncan. What? Yeah, you're... Uh, Owen. Yeah, you're going to have to take off. I'm getting complaints. You're having way too much fun. It's making everyone uncomfortable. Duncan. Okay. Walks away from the picnic table where he's been sitting alone. Owen, hey, hey, whoa, whoa, I'm just kidding. Wow, that wasn't even my best stuff. Are you for real? Listen, I can, I can tell you, you're in a complete, you're in complete awe of, of, of our picnic table. It's a one of a kind, except for the 200 other ones here that are exactly like it. There's more to the park to be seen. So, <laughs> Owen's way of saying, uh, get off your ass and uh, go enjoy life. All right, uh, we got a user review. Uh, 9 out of 10 stars, a movie to cherish. I adore this movie. To me, it depicts an awkward age that every introverted kid has to wrestle with, more so than more popular movies like Stand By Me. The main character is Duncan, a sullen, depressed preteen who vacations with his divorced mom, Tony Collette, and her obnoxious new man, Steve Carell, as C uh, Steve Carell, a long way from seeking a friend for the end of the world which came out the previous year okay uh the family heads to carol's beach house in an unnamed town that could be near cape cod or somewhere on long island the other characters appear almost immediately as Carell. oh Carell. not 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 not, not carol's beach home Carell's beach home the other characters appear almost immediately as Carell drives his station wagon with a way, way back seat, hence the film's title, into the driveway. Characters tailor-made for the comedy stylings 
of Alice and Janie, a lush, totally flirtatious and not the greatest role model for her children. Rob Cordy once again played playing Corell's best friend, and Amanda Pete as Co as Cordy's Mister 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 loving current girlfriend. Without revealing too much of the plot during the course of the summer, during the course of the summer, Duncan pulls himself out of his shell particularly after taking a job at a nearby water park owned by a perpetual slacker named Owen, played by Sam Rockwell, and managed by Owen's one-time girlfriend, Maya Rudolph. Uh, Owen becomes a surrogate big brother to Duncan, giving him life lessons while boosting his ego. This is one of Sam Rockwell's most appealing characters, the talented former actor who finally has an Oscar, has built a career out of playing weirdos or psychos, you get the feeling by the end of the movie that Owen really loves Duncan as a brother or even son, and Rockwell's natural performance seals it. He's backed by actor and screenwriter Nate Faxon, who also co-wrote equally charming Alexander Payne comedy drama The Descendants, and who was so hilarious as the stoner in Hamlet 2. The movie has a mid-70s look and feel to it, and not just because of the car Carell drives. The beach town is lifted straight from the town in Jaws, a movie I have to see, yet the characters have cell phones and iPods. This odd mashing of American beach town eras gives the action in the film a nearly fantastical quality, and every character, including the kids in the film, have some zingers. The slightly older girl next door, daughter of Janie's character and played by Anna Sophia Robb has a hilarious line about Duncan's love for Ario Speedwagon. A relatively unknown movie that you should seek out and treasure. This review is provided to us by Cats5 on July 19th, 2021. Uh, shout out to Cats5, contributor for IMDb. And this review is only from two years ago. So, and this movie came out a good 10 years ago, in 2013. So, overall IMDb rating, 7.4 out of 10 stars. Its score on Letterboxd, 3.6 out of 5 stars, which is fair. Uh, details, uh, release date, July 26, 2013, here in the United States. Uh, country of origin. USA. Um, it's got an official Facebook site and an official website as well. Uh, it's re it was released in the English language, uh, also known as the Wayback. Filming locations, uh, Water Whiz, 3031 Cranberry Highway, East Warham, Massachusetts. I'm definitely coming your way. All right, Water Whiz, y'all better... I'm letting y'all know, anybody who works at 3031 Cranberry Highway East, Wareham, uh, Massachusetts, I'm coming your way. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to visit, all right? I'm just letting y'all know. Cobb's Corner, we are coming to WaterWiz. I might even make a YouTube video out of it. Who knows? Subscribe to the YouTube channel. <clears throat> Production companies, Sycamore Pictures, The Walsh Company, and Madison Wells. Uh, box office, it had a reported budget of about $5 million, which, you know, again, independent film. Its gross domestic income in the U.S. and Canada was over $21 million. Uh, opening weekend, dom domestically, uh, its opening weekend, it made $552,000. Uh, reported, you know, July 7th, 2013. Well, oh. okay, opening weekend. Uh, gross uh, worldwide, it did make twenty-six million dollars. So it did make a it did make a product at the box office, both domestically and abroad. Um, well, I mean, it actually only really made its 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 operating budget outside outside the United States. Yeah, only about five thousand dollars more. Uh, Rotten Tom its score on Rotten Tomatoes, it's got a tomato meter score of 84% and an audience score of 84%. So this is one of those, I would say, rare times where the critics and the audience like actually see eye to eye and actually agree. You know, 84%, that's good. Yeah. 
the critics' consensus. Despite its familiar themes, The Way Way Back makes use of its talented cast, finely tuned script, and an abundance of charm to deliver a funny and satisfying coming-of-age story. Uh, you can watch this movie on Vudu. You can rent rent it or buy it on Vudu. You can rent it or buy it on Amazon Prime Video, and it's available for purchase only on Apple TV. You can purchase it on Apple TV. I purchased it on YouTube Movies, so it's probably available on YouTube Movies for I think maybe I don't know thirteen like twelve ninety nine, thirteen ninety nine, one of those. Um. Nice coming of age story. I will say that I don't really think that uh, my generation, you know, Gen Z, I don't think we really have a lot of these coming of age uh, stories. I think that, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of the old John Hughes movies, the Ferris Bueller's Day Off, the 16 Candles, the Breakfast Clubs, uh, you know, the whole John Hughes era of uh, coming of age movies. Oh, Adventures in Babysitting is another one. You know, fun movies, fun coming of age tales. But I would I wouldn't really say that we had a whole lot of those when I was growing up, which, you know, again, I'm only twenty two years old. So this movie, you know, um chances are the majority of you listening have never heard of this movie, and that's okay, because again, it's an independent film from Fox Searchlight Pictures. But I highly recommend that we all watch this movie a couple times, because uh, I think that I think it's a movie where there, there's something there for all for all ages. You know, e you know, even even for those of you that are listening who maybe are parents who have teenagers who have a teenage son, or you know, who has a teenage son who may be introverted, or you yourself are maybe a bit introverted, regardless of how of how old you are. There's something in this movie for everyone. You know. I mean, that's all. That's all I got to say on uh, the way way back. Can you guys believe that we are at the end of our series? At the end of our the movies that will change your life series. Uh, special special thanks to the listener who recommended this series to me. You know who you are. Uh, big shout out to you. Uh, let me know in the comments down below, guys. Like, what was your favorite movie on this series? Just to recap. We reviewed Groundhog Day, Fight Club, uh, I think my next one was Catch Me If You Can, The Count of Monte Cristo, Elf, Limitless, Crazy Stupid Love, and just now with The, the Way Way Back. So which one of these movies was your favorite? You know, maybe if you guys want to like send me your rankings, you know, definitely hit me up in the uh, comments down below wherever you're listening from so so yeah that, that that's that's all for today's review of the way way back if you liked what you heard today then don't forget to give us a review on spotify and apple podcast if you've got a movie or a movie series that you want me to review next then all you got to do is hit me up on instagram or tiktok if you don't have instagram or tiktok then you can also email me at cobscornerpodcast at gmail.com. All of that information is in the show notes below. If you made it to the end of this episode, I'd greatly appreciate it. Be sure to turn on post notifications because I upload new episodes Fridays at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and you don't want to miss out. I hope that you enjoyed your stay here at Cobbs Corner, and I'll talk to all of you in the next episode. Peace.